Excellencies, dear Prime Minister, dear Ambassadors, dear guests, we are honored and pleased to host tonight's MCHAM reception, especially as it is the first after three years of pausing due to COVID. We are now four weeks into the reception season and many important things relating to the most special times we are currently experiencing have already been expressed and shared. So let me strike a slightly different tone. Tonight's event brings together many important actors from the world of diplomacy, of economy, and from what is the link between diplomacy and economy, namely the Chambers of Commerce. Luxembourg has the chance and opportunity to host a large array of international Chambers of Commerce and MCHAM is one of the most outstanding. In today's world, diplomacy in general and economic diplomacy in particular has a very important role to play, a role which impacts more people and companies than ever before. You are the sensors, the radars of what is really going on in the day-to-day -day relationships between the respective host and guest countries. And the larger the communities you link and represent, the more important your work becomes, even if it is sometimes less visible on the surface. We are experiencing an era of great uncertainty and little previsibility. Citizens and corporates are looking for sound pillars of stability, of reliance, of trust. And this is all the more the case when they operate in an international and thus sometimes foreign environment. Luxembourg has always had a particular strength in federating, bringing together, promoting and nurturing what unites rather than what separates people and cultures. I wish us all for the year to come that we will excel in this ability and that we will be safe harbors for economic proficiency and intercultural friendship. Ladies and gentlemen, I have now the honor to introduce our Prime Minister Xavier Bettel, who gives us the honor of being our keynote speaker tonight. Thank you very much. I don't know, yeah, my advisor just arrived in the room and I've been told that I didn't stick to any text the last two weeks, so I will try to stick to the text a bit tonight. <laughs> I will have to risk that no one will write any more texts for me, so it's better to stick a bit. I will try, Frank, I promise you. So thank you for the invitation and giving me the possibility to address you and your valued guests uh, uh, today. I will share some thoughts about the historic links between both countries, between the United States and uh, Luxembourg, the current geopolitical situation that we live, the European perspective, the state of multilateral collaboration, and future collaboration also among partners, but also the rise of protectionism trends across the globe. And of course, the future of Luxembourg in this ever-changing world facing multiple challenges. Challenges that we as partners should tackle together as we have demonstrated so well in the past. Because the US-Luxembourg relations have been excellent and that for many decades. Ever since the launch of our diplomatic relations and that was in 1903, the United States and the Grand Duchy of Luxembourg have worked together as trusted respectful and also valuable partners in business and also beyond. When a big and an aggressive neighbor attacked Luxembourg and the entirety of Europe over 80 years ago, the United States did not look away and did not stay inactive. The US helped liberate Luxembourg and brought peace to a war-torn Europe. And you, people who and I'm sorry to, to already, Frank, you see I was not able to do more than two pages. 
but the fact is, when I still see today that in some countries, extremist party, or even there are some countries, and I, I've just been honored by Greece, but sorry to quote Greece, uh, in not the last elections, but 10 years ago, there was a party who was a Nazi party. Obdore was a Nazi, Nazi party. And they still got votes, and they got elected. We just celebrated the liberation of the camps. Just go and see what happened in Auschwitz. And this was not done by machines. This was done by people. And if you don't realize how important the American help was, go and see Ham, where thousands of young soldiers died for us. And as I said it already before, most of them didn't know where Luxembourg was on the map. And if I'm able to stand freely here in front of you, it is because the Americans decided to help and to help us to be, again, a free country. We should never forget that. And I thought that we learned from history, but I see that we have to repeat and to repeat and to repeat and to repeat what happened. And um, the survivors, the last survivors of the camps are dying. And it's important to keep the souvenirs and what they lived for. But this is the lib to get the liberty to end the war. But also in the rebuilding of the European Union, the Americans were partners. And we will never forget what your fight for our liberty and in our democracies has been done. Our capital is uh, a mirror of uh, also that gratitude when you see also the main avenues, the Franklin D. Roosevelt, Plutzburg, Roosevelt, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> the Boulevard Roosevelt, or the John F. Kennedy, just to name two of them. During the decades that followed, US companies settled in Luxembourg in large numbers and brought prosperity also and stability to the Grand Duchy of Luxembourg. And among the US company that uh, opened in Luxembourg, many became and still remain among the top employers also in our country. I think of the manufacturing industries, of course, where companies like Goodyear, Dupont de Nemours, Guardian, or Avery Dennison have created many jobs and have, Luxembourg's, have helped also Luxembourg's industry to become one of the backbones of our economy. All these companies still have, and as an industry, a huge impact in a huge role in the Luxembourgish ecosystem. Many of them were at the beginning it was just producing, today is also through research and development presence and innovation centers that help also to tackle the challenges of our time by always adapting also to new realities. I think, for example, Dupont uh, from their production site in Contern helped protect the vulnerable during the COVID-19 pandemic. And I remember also my Spanish colleague where we were able to send them the products of Contern to Spain and where they were able to sue. And just with the, just the, with the, with the products from Dupont de Nemours to save so many lives. So to the, the lot, a lot of people through in the world were wearing products from Dupont de Nemours from the company in Contern. The rise in financial service drove the installation also of uh, US financial institutions and consultancy firms in Luxembourg, which also continue to employ thousands of workers. Then during the 21st century, the tech sector has opened new and innovative possibilities for collaboration. And Amazon is a very big, for instance, and I hope it will continue, but is a very big employer in Luxembourg. And they, they are becoming on the way to be the biggest employer, even in Luxembourg, and I'm happy. They started, I remember, with seven persons in the Grand Duchy of Luxembourg, and that was not 100 years ago. That's a few years ago. We are proud also to host multiple European headquarters of these US companies, and we shall not forget how important the US-Luxembourg relations have been for the development of this country 
into an economic powerhouse. Today we are at a crucial point again, and I'm happy also to see the, you as ambassador. I started my day with you. I finished my day with you. We started this morning where we had a meeting, a business meeting with Ukrainians, where we are seeing how to rebuild also a country, because the country is for the moment suffering a war, but we need also the economy is still working. And we see, need to see how we can also help as soon as possible to rebuild Ukraine as soon as it will be possible. But also to, to see how we can help them now. This is material help and I'm very proud that my country decided since the beginning also to help Ukraine. And I'm sorry to make a link with the message I started. Some people ask why we are helping Ukraine today. I could have asked why did the Americans help us a years ago. It's not because a bigger neighbor decides what is going to happen to another country that we have to say, it's not my country. Solidarity means to fight for values. And today it's Ukraine. If we don't react, it's a fight for our values, but it's also tomorrow Baltic countries, Poland, Romania. Who will be the next? And uh, so we have to realize that again in our history, a bigger neighbor decided to attack a democratic country. That's the reality. And so times are challenging and the future is, I have to say, Francoise, as you said, is quite uh, unpredictable. I cannot tell you when the war will finish because I still do not understand why it started. And I know I got criticized from some persons that at the beginning I tried to, I, I, I had Vladimir Zelensky on the phone, then I had Vladimir Putin on the phone, then uh, Vladimir Zelensky on the phone, then Vladimir Putin on the phone, because I tried to see if there was any opportunity. But when I realized that there was no will from Russian side to end the war, I've stopped. And when I saw what happened in Butcha, and I've been to Butcha, you cannot find words. And so impunity, it's not acceptable. And we saw, um, we had the World War, and after the World War, we had also a world split in two. That's also something we should not forget, that the world was divided in two. And um, it was two camps, and the recent months have again thrown our world into lasting changes. I appreciate how the leaders of the free world stood together since the war started. And we see that most of the countries, when we see what's going to happen, what's happening in, in New York at the UN for the votes, the democratic world st stands behind Ukraine. And I, I, I told it also to Vladimir Putin when I had him on the phone that if you have Syria, Belarusia, and North Korea as biggest supporter, you should ask yourself where have you arrived? What have you destroyed? We should not forget that with Russia we had not always the easiest relation, but we had partnerships, we had diplomatic relations, we had economic relations, cultural relations, scientific relations. Everything is broken. Everything has been destroyed by an unnecessary and justified aggression. And I'm grateful also that we were able to align sanctions against the Kremlin regime and also the closest collaborators. And so the free world had shown, in fact, a great unity. And I think this was a big surprise for Putin because Putin thought he could divide us. He could divide Europe and he could divide the world. And he was not able to do it. He, know, he wasn't able to, he was not able to do so and he was not able to divide us because we know how peace and collaboration is important. Unity and collaboration are more than, than everything. I witness with Concern, on the other hand, also 
and protectionist trends across the globe during recent months. And instead of building on multilateral accomplishments and collaboration, a number of countries have decided to close down. I want to avoid that countries enter a spiral of protectionism. I remember, and sorry, Mr. Ambassador, but I have to quote, I, 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 I was elected, my first colleague was Barack Obama. Then we had four more complicated years. And I have, to, I don't quote anyone, but the fact was that it was uh, the reaction of protectionism is protectionism. And so instead of trying to build things together, in fact, we harm also each other. And I want to, to avoid this spiral of protectionism that could happen, and I it won't help anyone. Instead, we should prepare also our economies together in a constructive exchange to find common solutions for economies of the future and focus on fair trade relations. We need, in fact, to maintain what we call the level playing field, which is so important, and the level playing field also in our trade relations. This level playing field has always been the center of our trade relationships, and we want to preserve this balance. In, and we have to see it. In the past, this collaboration has brought us prosperity, and has brought us also the, the best, so let us continue also on that path. I know also that Europe have not done, Europeans have not done everything perfectly in the past neither. We also have responsibilities, where for some American companies it was considered as against them. And we have to think always before we take decisions what could be not only the measures but also the perceptions for others. And we see also as Europeans that we were very dependent. We saw it all with the masks. And I just want to remember the, the fights we had at airports between democratic countries where we were buying more. And I'm very happy that we were able in Europe, even at the beginning people told me, yes, but we could buy more vaccines. I was happy at the beginning that it was rationalized and organized by the European Commission. Because tr if we would have done the protectionism on the very, in Luxembourg we didn't produce vaccines, but Germany could have said, okay, the German vaccines will be first for Germans and then for the others. The French vaccine didn't happen. But we, we had, no, this is not, but it's just the fact that it, 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 it could be, it, 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 it could have been, but so it's, it's just the fact so that if countries, bigger countries decided that what they produce is just for their population, we would have suffered all under it. And if it would have been the one who pays the most, because the commission wouldn't have been the buyer, how will I explain with my GDP that I can buy for my population the same week? And then my colleague from Bulgaria, for example, which is less rich country, wouldn't be able, because there would be a race to the top of the prices if we wouldn't have coordinated also and would have let done protectionism in some countries. And believe me, at the beginning, some people, and especially some populists in their country, wanted to have protectionism also for the vaccines in their own country. And when we sow also for the vaccines, but we see it also with the gas, we were dependent from Russia. And I'm very happy that also through common approach, not the protectionism approach, but the true common approach, we were able to find new partners. But we should not forget that the best way to be less dependent on energy is to use also less energy. And that's the reason also we should learn lessons also for the future. And we should also say, and I said it also at the FIDIL, we have trusted partners, but we have also to, to build a more balanced relationships because we need also as European Union, I told you, depending on who is in the lead in the country, who is the president, the commerce can change. So we need also as European continent being also 
strat having an, an, a become more sovereign in some strategic um, uh, sectors. I, uh, s we saw it with the gas, we see it with the chips now, so it's important that we have European Chip Act also to see how we are able also to be in European continent where we are able to not to live by ourselves because this would be a nightmare, but where we are able economically if not to be dependent on one. I said uh, at the Fedil, the example, I was, uh, I was a mayor of the city of Luxembourg, so I did a lot of weddings, but I was also a lawyer, so I did a lot of divorces. And <laughs> the fact is, when you start a relation, it's always easy, but usually you don't plan the moment when it will go bad. So I always recommend it as a lawyer, it's better to have a good contrat de mariage than a bad divorce. <laughs> and it's the same for business. It is better to know that in case of you have option B, a plan B. Because if not, imagine we wouldn't have been able to organize the energy in Europe. And we should not forget that, and I'm, again, the American partners with the LNG production, because we are still heating ourselves with Russian gas. It's not popular to say that, but we, with our tanks are full of Gazprom that we bought before we decided not to buy anymore. But so the next year will be, not the next year, but this December, this winter will be important. And there, it's important that we have partners we can work with. And so we have, as European, also to accelerate the development in many sectors, especially in energy, as I told you. And uh, in tech, for instance, Europe has to innovate and host more future-proof ICT companies. And the European industry needs new and fast impulses also to tackle the current and the future challenges. Because there is, um, I told you, a big challenge for us, which is the energy challenge. But on the other hand, we have also a climate challenge. And we should not forget just one because of the other. And in the, we very often, and that's human, a crisis bring, we forget the crisis because there is a new crisis. And we should not forget the climate crisis because it's also the legacy we will leave to the next generation. And there again, we have to work together. And I'm very happy that the United States are back also on this track of this wish to fight the climate change. Because at the beginning, I remember when uh, just after President Trump decided to leave the Paris Agreement, it could have been a domino effect with all the countries saying, if they don't need, why should we? And we, 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 stuck, we, we, we stood together solider behind this. And I'm very happy that uh, America is green again. Ladies and gentlemen, please allow also me to address some purely Luxembourgish subjects, such as the current situation also of the country and the outlook also for the coming months. Um, as you know, I have a deadline in October, but until then, I will be the Prime Minister of Luxembourg at least. I will uh, continue to work with uh, passion and also motivation for the best interest of the country the next months. But 2022 has shown that Luxembourg has a model that works. I, uh, we have a social dialogue. I know it's not always popular. And some of the, con I, I know that for some uh, bosses, they heard that uh, uh, today they announced that uh, a new index tranche, I don't know how you call it in English, uh, index slide, uh, will, they uh, do a slide of cheese, uh, index slide uh, will, uh, will fall uh, this month. And believe me, even if some people think it's, it's, it's this uh, index is not the right situation, how, will you explain to people when everything is rising that you, you want to avoid strikes? I just want, if, if you go back tonight and we, I don't speak too long, you will be able to watch French TV. You will see a few weeks ago, no, you don't want to see French TV, but then two weeks ago you could have watched Belgian TV. <laughs> last month you could have watched German TV. And you will see the last demonstrations we had in Luxembourg, where people were on the road, a general, a general demonstration where people stopped work, was in the 80s. 
And this was for the index. So the indexation of salaries is also a piece, a, a social piece, who brings in Luxembourg um, solutions. And the social dialogue works because we had tripartite. We had tripartite. Um, we had two tripartites, which is a model with, with the uh, employers and the um, unions. We sit together around the table. And the first tripartite was organized to tackle the consequence also of the Russian war. And we decided to mobilize money and, in fact, to fight inflation. Some people say, yeah, you were not at, uh, enough targeted measures. It was to limit the inflations. And we were able to limit the inflations when you see also compared. And it was important to take them very early. Some countries are still discussing about measures they want to take, but the inflation is 9, 10, 15, 20. We have in some European countries over 20% of inflation. Imagine fifth index tension at Gifkin. No? <laughs> so, uh, so for us, it was it was important to support the economy and also to support the jobs and that the jobs were preserved in uh, in Luxembourg. And we saw it already with the COVID crisis, when the COVID crisis was over, the economic recovery of Luxembourg was bigger and faster than most European countries. And so it was a, a balanced response also for the employees and for the employers. And we should uh, not forget, as I told you before, that social peace is not given. And we need continuous exchange also with, with the partners. And uh, I know that some companies came also to Luxembourg because they have this stability. They have a social stability, they have economic stability, they have political stability. I appreciate the last nine years more than ever. But the fact is that we, you don't change from, you know, from extreme left to extreme right. In some countries, you could, you, everything could change. And this is something even if I shouldn't promote other parties. But in Luxembourg, the center is very bright. Socialists, Christian Democrats, Greens, Liberals are more centered than if you would compare to other countries. We don't have where you have two parties, where you are just this or this. No. In Luxembourg, the middle is very large. And I appreciate that we don't have these political fights uh, between extreme right and extreme left also in, uh, in Luxembourg. And for me, this, this Luxembourg system works and uh, as I told you before um, for me it will be it will be important for the employers to know that I, we promised that if we see that there will be a third one at the end of the year we will organize a new trip at it and that it, the state will help because we know how difficult it is with the raising of the energy prices and etc and etc uh, to cover all uh, all this um, we know that the challenges are huge. The challenges are huge, and not only in Luxembourg, also on an on European level. I told you about competitivity, energy prices, also talents are very important. And I'm happy that the government also made it easier to have talents who comes to Luxembourg. But when I speak about talents, there are some projects we did where you won't think about. But for example, we did the European school, and you have the Bag International, you can do everywhere without going to the international school. Because the international school costs a fortune, and when you start in a company, for a company, for a specialist startup, it's not possible to pay the fee of the school for the employee, and for the employee, it's impossible to pay the fee of the school. So you have the opportunity to grow in different languages and to have a in public school and having also different routes. I could continue like that. But this is for me also what makes the strength of this country. It's being different, having different origins, having different religions, political opinions. But to know that to put things in common makes also the strength of this, uh, of this country. So in spite of the multiple challenges I just addressed, Luxembourg will have to show a great capability also of resilience and innovation in order to maintain its prosperity and competitiveness. I uh, repeat what I uh, uh, already said, and I know it's uh, politically not appreciated by other partners, but in the current situation that we have now, 
a reduction of the work time would be poisoned for the economy because we have already not enough people for the jobs we need to fulfill. I don't want to say that uh, maybe in some countries it works, but I just can tell you that in Luxembourg to reduce uh, the work, working time uh, today, so people tell me, yes, but if they are more happy, they are working better, I just can see that for the moment we are not able. We are not able. So I don't want to promise you things uh, that uh, I know are not good for our uh, country. Because we should know that for the moment already companies have problems to find because the baby boomer generation is not baby anymore. And they need to be replaced. And for the moment, even in companies, they are not able to find the persons to replace. So uh, I firmly believe in a flexible model. I think it is uh, important uh, to in that the labor can be adapted also in specific needs of any employee and also in, in companies. Um, and there is no, no f model that works for all the companies. All companies are different. All companies are different needs. And I think it's important that in the companies they are able also to find the best solutions for that companies. So ladies and gentlemen, let us remind what worked well in the, in the past and what brought freedom, what brought prosperity and peace to our countries. And let's continue to work closely, closely together on the level playing field to prepare us all for a better future. Don't let anyone divide us. Let us search for ways forward building on our wealthy past without forgetting the needs also of the future generation. Together, we are stronger. And that's something which is, um, I think in Luxembourg, we always have this maxim, we will stay where we are. That doesn't mean we want to stay where we are. We will not stay where we are. And it is very important to realize that we have challenging times behind us. We have challenging times for the moment and we'll have challenging times also in future. And this country was always successful because a lot of people forgot that we were a poor country. Luxembourg was an agricultural country. And also Luxembourg left and they moved, Mr. Ambassador, to the United States. A lot of, Lux they, they speak even some villages, <coughs> Luxembourgish. And um, uh, this is to prove also when we speak about refugees, People coming here in Luxembourg, especially the ones coming now from Ukraine or from Syria, they don't want to have a better life for most of them, but they just want to live. They want to survive. And believe me, imagine you would have to pack your whole life in a plastic bag and leave the country without knowing where you will go, how you will go. You just know that you have to pay or to organize a trip without knowing where you will arrive, just to try to be alive and to survive. So Luxembourg was always successful when we were open. We participated of the creation of the European Union. We participated of the creation of the UN. We participated of the creation of the NATO because we believe that together we are much stronger. And let me, because it's the last day of the year where I can wish you all the best for the next 11 months uh, to that all your dreams come true, that especially good health, um, that you will be able to spend a lot of time with the people you like and especially, I, and I wish to all of you to be as happy in his job that I am. I was very lucky because I started, I was uh, elected congressman 24 years ago and since then I became deputy mayor of the city, city council, I was a lawyer, I was uh, prime minister and, uh, no, I'm, I was, I'm still uh, prime minister. <laughs> And I wish to all of you just to be able to know that you are part of the success of your company, of your economy, or of your job. And I know that if I'm uh, able to stand here in front of you, it's because I have also a team. So even if you are a boss or the one who is opening the door, without being a team, you won't have the success. So never forget that you have to, uh, to be a boss, but never forget where you come from. And also that if you are successful, it's because you have a, a team. And Frank, thank you for your speech. I tried 90% to stick to the text. Have a nice evening.